Hello, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up live streaming to platforms such as YouTube and Facebook direct from your DJI RC2 controller. I'm also going to show you how I can get over some of the limitations that DJI impose on us with the streaming capabilities of the RC2. And that comes in the latter part of the video. Right, I know this isn't for everybody and probably some of you are going to be saying, why live stream? What's the purpose? Well, some people do want to live stream. So I'm just showing you how to set this up. And then I'm going to go through my additional way to get over these limitations I mentioned earlier. So what are these limitations? Well, the first one is the resolution. You can stream at 720p, which means your broadcast will be 1280 by 720. That isn't full HD. Um, it looks okay. And you'll see later on, I'll show an example of a live stream going. Um, but we can get better results using an alternative method, which I've mentioned earlier, which you're probably all waiting to see what this fabulous method is, but bear with me. Let's go through the basics first. Uh, the second limitation is the bit rate. So you're restricted to either three megabits per second or five megabits per second. Now, if you're using the RC N2 screenless controller, which is where you attach a phone or a tablet, you can actually stream at 1080p from that. And the reason you can do that is DJI say that this device doesn't have enough oomph to encode at 1080p, whereas your phone or your tablet almost certainly does. That's the reason why the DJI Fly app on Android and iOS has an option to stream at 1080p. So to live stream on YouTube, you're going to need to have a YouTube account, obviously, and then you're going to need to apply to have live stream enabled on your account. This can take 24 to 48 hours and there's plenty of videos on YouTube itself showing you how to go through that process. So you're going to need a decent internet connection as well. This, if you're streaming from home, will be your home internet connection and it's the upload speed that matters because you're pushing data to YouTube and that's using your upload bandwidth. If you're out and about in the field, you're going to need to pair your RC2 controller to your mobile phone and use 4G or 5G. Now, depending on what sort of data plans you have, what sort of speed you get in those areas, that's going to dictate how fast you're going to be able to push that data to YouTube. But it's more than possible once you're out and about to pair the RC2 to your mobile phone's hotspot. So rather than just diving into the controller settings on how to get going, we're going to actually concentrate on setting up the stream in, on the YouTube itself. And I'm going to show you that on my PC. You can also do this on a phone or a tablet using a, a web browser. As long as you've got some kind of internet connection, you can set the stream up. The reason I'm going to take you through this is you get a lot more control over what the stream's going to be called, whether it's visible to everybody, whether it's unlisted if you're just doing a test. You're also going to need some information that's on that stream website that I'll take you through, which is the URL um, and then the stream key, which is unique to you. You must not disclose your stream key. So if that gets leaked out, you, there is an option to generate a new one. But as you'll see, it's hidden by default and you can reveal it. And I'll take you through what you need to do with those at the next part of the video. But let's crack on and I'll have a look at actually setting up the stream in YouTube Studio first. So welcome to my PC. This is my YouTube homepage. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is start a new live video. And we do this up over in the right hand corner and we say create and go live. Now, don't worry, we're not actually going to go live until we do something on the RC2 controller. You'll see that YouTube Studio is now launched. And this is where we can configure things like our title, what category it is, and our privacy. So if we quickly just look at those options, you've got a title, you've got a description. And I've got mine set to unlisted, which means this won't go live. Well, it'll go live, but no one will know it's gone live unless I send them the link. If you're wanting to do a public video, i.e. go live so that everybody can see it straight away, you would set it to public. And then you've got an option for private, which again, you'd need the URL which you'd provide. So I'm, for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to make mine unlisted. Otherwise, I'll get some weird viewers starting to watch a, a, a tutorial. Um, you can also go down to your category. I always set science and technology for this sort of stuff. And there's lots of options about tagging, whether people can re-watch the video. Just take your time and look at all these options. They're all pretty much self-explanatory. Um, you can also dictate uh, if there's going to be a live chat and who can participate in that live chat. And once you're happy with those settings, we're just going to press save. So as you can see, 
YouTube Studio saying, start sending us your video data from your streaming software to go live. So nothing's actually happened yet. We do need two things now. We need this stream URL. This may be different depending on where you are in the world. I suspect uh, YouTube will have many of these URLs. One thing I've noticed is it doesn't seem to change um, for all the live streams I've done on my other channel. This always stays uh, static, but I do check it. And then the second part of what you need is this stream key here. Now you can press this to reveal it. I'm not going to do that because if you've got my stream key, you in theory could stream as me with no additional authentication. <laughs> but there is a nice copy option as well. So with those two elements, we then need to use those two elements on the DJI RC2 controller. Let me show you what we need to do with them next. So DJI in their infinite wisdom haven't made this next bit easy for us. Most streaming software has two fields to fill in. One is the URL and the second field is the key. When we get to the RC2 controller configuration, you'll notice there is no option. There is just literally a URL field. And if we were to paste just the URL from YouTube that we got earlier, it wouldn't work. So what do we need to do? Well, here's an example. Let's say my stream key is ABC123456 DEF789 GHI. And my stream URL is RTMP colon slash slash a.rtmp.youtube.com slash live2. What we need to do is combine those strings and separate them with a slash. So the full URL string we would actually use on the DJI RC2 would be rtmp colon slash slash a.rtmp.youtube.com slash live2 slash abc-123-456-def-789 dash 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 ghi. Now obviously you replace your URL and your key and you create the same string, but that's the concept of what you need to do. Let's actually go ahead now and configure the DJI RC2 controller with this information and start our live stream. So the first thing we're going to do is select the three dots in the top right hand corner, then select the transmission tab and then finally select the RTMP option. In here, this is where we enter the RTMP address. This is the stream URL and stream key that we combined earlier. So obviously you would enter your details here. We can then choose whether we're streaming at three or five megabits. And then when we're finally ready to go live, we can press the start button. We get a nice little countdown timer. And then you'll notice up in the top right, near the middle of the screen, there's a little icon that's appeared. This is showing you that you are now live streaming. So I'm just gonna do a quick takeoff. And what I'm gonna do is show you YouTube Studio and YouTube itself showing the live stream as I was actually doing this very quick one minute flight. Now, over on the YouTube side, you'll notice that there is some video artifacting. My Wi-Fi one, isn't the best upload speed in the world at all. Um, and secondly, the Wi-Fi when I'm out in the garden isn't great either. So as I say, this works great with 5G or 4G. Unfortunately, I live in a village where we don't have actually any mobile signals. So there's no chance of any 4G or 5G. In YouTube Studio, you can see that there's a chat option. So if people were joining your live stream, you would see the chat in there and any sort of stream analytics. So we're just coming down to land now. And then to end the stream, we can either do that in YouTube Studio or you can press the middle icon at the top and there's an option to exit the live stream. So whilst I was doing the live streaming, I noticed that occasionally I'd start to get this message about me sending too much data too quickly to YouTube Studio. And I decided to do a couple of tests. Um, one was to connect a microphone to the RC2 controller. And what I did notice was as soon as I did that, the next three streams that I tested it with, the message didn't occur. I also noticed someone on Facebook having exactly the same issue and I had a chat with them and they indeed weren't using a microphone and were getting the same issue. So I connected a USB-C microphone. This is a Rode wireless ME microphone uh, with a USB-C connector. And when I did that, I noticed that the message about sending data too quickly disappeared. 
Um, and I did this three times. I did another couple of stream tests and each time with the microphone connected, I didn't get the message again. So it could have just been my setup, but it does look there could there does look to be a, a little bug there if you don't have a microphone connected. I'd be interested to know if you get any similar results with your own tests. So that about wraps it up for streaming to YouTube from a DJI RC2 controller. What about Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and all those other platforms? I'll cover those next. So we need to talk about the elephant in the room. As of today, which is November 2023, the DJI Fly app version 1.12.3 on the RC2 cannot live stream to platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. And there's one reason for this. All those platforms only support a protocol called RTMPS, which is a secure version of RTMP. The RC2 controller and the DJI Fly app only support RTMP. Now, platforms such as YouTube still support RTMP, but these other platforms dropped RTMP quite some time ago. So come on, DJI, it can't be difficult for you to implement RTMPS support. However, we can get around this with other methods. And I'm gonna show you one way um, later on in the video, which is my, this super duper way I keep mentioning it. But one other way we can do this is using a platform called Restream.io. I'll cover this off in a different video. So if you've seen my other video on connecting an RC2 controller to an iPad, I'm gonna put a link to the video up there. I'm actually gonna use this method as a way of live streaming to Facebook. The RC2 controller will have no idea that it's actually live streaming because it isn't doing the live streaming. It's actually a program, a free piece of software on the iPad called Camo Studio. And what that lets you do is pick various video sources, whether that be the internal iPad cameras or an external video source. It supports RT RTMPS, so that way we can stream to platforms that the DJI RC2 controller can't stream to currently today. One of the other advantages of doing it this way over the built-in RC2 streaming is we're not limited by the bit rate or more importantly by now by the resolution. So we can go right up to 1440p, which does make a lot of difference in terms of the streaming quality. I appreciate not everybody has a second tablet or a second monitor that can run a piece of software, um, but I'm just showing you the options that are available. The option that potentially is available to other users that we're using Restream.io, as I mentioned earlier, I'll cover that off in a diff different video as this video is becoming quite long. So let's have a quick look at Camo Studio and what we need to set this up and I'm actually going to do a demonstration of live streaming to Facebook. So here we have the UVC HDMI capture card plugged into the iPad and then we've got a standard USB-C to HDMI cable plugged into that cable and that's what's giving us this video in Cam Studio. So the first thing to do is hit the menu option and we select our primary source settings and now there is an option for external video source. So select external video source and then choose capture card. Capture card will only appear if you've got this UVC capture card plugged in. You can have a secondary video source. So you'll notice down here, um, this is my iPad's camera. So I'm just gonna change this to the front camera just to show you there I am. Um, but for the purpose of the video, I'll turn it off. But some people like multiple video sources. Now, if we click this option on the top middle, which is the streaming option, you'll see I've got a couple of them already set up, but we'll press the plus in the top right hand corner and we're gonna select custom. Here we would enter our streaming address and streaming key. Notice they are two fields unlike the RC2 option. So here we'd enter the Facebook URL and our Facebook key, but I'll go through that in a second. So there are many ways to go live on Facebook. I'm gonna to go to facebook.com slash live slash create. And you'll see this option here of create a live event or go live. So I'm gonna hit go live. Don't worry, you're not actually gonna go live just yet. And then we're gonna choose streaming software from the video source option. 
Here we can see it was revealed what our streaming key is down below. I blanked mine out. This is what we'd need on the for the previous screen. We can add an optional title and an optional description. Apologies for my really bad typing. So here's your private stream key. And then if you want to find out what the URL is, if you go under advanced options, you can see down there, there's the server URL. So with those two options, you can then put those into the Canva app. Now, and we're almost ready to live stream. So there's a couple more options of where do you want your live stream to go? So over on the left hand side, I'm going to leave mine as post on timeline. But if you've got the relevant permissions, you can actually post into a group that you could be a member of. There's also the privacy, so by default it's public. I'm going to say it's going to stream that only me can see it. That's just for test purposes. So just before we go live, we go back into the Camo Studio app and here we will enter the Facebook streaming URL in the top field and your private streaming key in the bottom field and then press submit. We can now just press the start button and we should be live. So what I'll do is I'll put Camo Studio and the Facebook broadcasting page side by side, like I did with the YouTube version in the previous section. So as you can see, I'm just inside because today's not a great day for flying. It's just in my man cave. Um, but over on the right hand side, we've got the Facebook live event. So it's showing you what things and you can look at the analytics as a dashboard. I won't go through all of those at all. And then over on the left hand side, we've got what Camo Studio sees. Now, hopefully you've noticed the big difference between the two streaming methods is we don't have what is called a clean video feed. We've still got all the DGI RC telemetry present in the live stream. Right now, there's nothing you can do to switch this off. Maybe this will come with a future update. Maybe it won't, but it is certainly one of the downsides of streaming this way. Some people don't mind it. Some people actually want it on, but a lot of people want it off. So you can just got a what's called a clean video feed. So that's the end of the video. I appreciate it's been a long video and there's been a lot of me waffling and talking. I do want to try and make my videos as accurate and as easy to follow as possible. So do please bear with me. I'm just going to leave you with this pros and cons table I've created of each streaming method. As you can see, there are multiple pros and multiple cons to each method. And I get that streaming isn't for everybody. I'll expect to see some comments asking why am I even bothering doing this, but I enjoy making the videos. Um, so as ever, take care everybody and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Happy flying. Until next time, bye bye.